Income tax 2023-2024. Credits for qualifying children and other dependents. Overview. Get ready and some coffee so we can recognize the quacks when doing income tax preparation 2023-2024. Most of this information can be found in the schedule. First, a word from our sponsor. Yeah, uh, actually, we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers, they don't want to be seen with us. But but that's okay, whatever. Because our merchandise is, is better than their stupid stuff anyways. Like our CPA six-pack shirts, a must-have for any pool or beach time. Mixing money with muscle, always sure to attract attention. Yeah, even if you're not a CPA, you need this shirt. So you can like pull in that iconic CPA six-pack stomach muscle vibe, man. You know, that CPA six-pack everyone envisions in their mind when they think CPA. Yeah, as a CPA, I actually and unusually don't have tremendous abs. However, I was blessed with a whole lot of belly hair. Yeah, allowing me to sculpt the hair into a nice CPA six-pack-like shape which is highly attractive. Yeah, may maybe the shirt will help you generate some belly hair too. And if it does, make sure to let me know. Maybe I'll try wearing it on my head. A and yes, I know six pack isn't spelled right, but three letters is more efficient than four. So I trimmed it down a bit, okay? It's an improvement. If you would like a commercial free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com. 8812 instructions, credits for qualifying children and other dependents tax year 2023, which you can find on the IRS website at irs.gov, irs.gov. Looking at the income tax formula, we're focused on the bottom this time for the credits. Remembering that the first half of the income tax formula is basically that funny income statement. Most income statements having income minus expenses resulting in net income. Here having income minus various deductions resulting in taxable income. Taxable income therefore basically being the bottom line of the income statement part of the income tax formula. However, it's only half the battle, half the story. We still have the bottom half of the income tax formula. Our focus at this point where we first take the taxable income, calculate the tax based on it, which is more difficult than you would think at first because we can't just multiply times a flat rate because that would be a flat tax and we have a progressive tax system and some of the income is going to be subject to different rates rather than ordinary income rates such as long-term capital gains, such as uh, qualified dividends, for example. We talked about that in a prior course or section, but once we do that calculation, we end up with tax before credits and other taxes. Then we have to deal with the credits. We have to deal with the other taxes. We're focused here on the credits, noting that we have two line items with credits in them. One is here with the credits and other taxes. Other taxes could include things such as self-employment tax, for example. The other credits are in this line item because they have an impact on the income tax equation similar to the tax impact. In other words, credits we typically think of as good and therefore they're similar in some respects to deductions, both of them being good for taxes. But if we had a dollar credit versus a dollar deduction, we would rather take the credit because if it was a dollar deduction, it would simply decrease the taxable income resulting in a lesser benefit, which would be dependent upon the ordinary income tax rate that's being applied to it. Whereas if we get a dollar deduction, we get that full dollar deduction, which is like an equivalent from standpoint to taxes, right? There's the tax has an impact, a dollar for dollar tax, and these credits have a dollar for dollar decrease on the credit side of things, which is why they're kind of in the same area with regards to the income tax formula and the form 1040. That would give us our total tax. Now, then you're going to say, well, why are the credits down here? We have another item of credits down here, which is lined up this time with the payments. In other words, 
Normally, if you think this is the tax before we think about the payments, we would then compare that to the payments that we have already made during the year, usually with W-2 withholdings to get the amount of refund or the tax due. Why do we have this further complications with credits in the payment category? And that's because these types of credits are going to be the refundable portion of the credits, meaning they're not going to stop giving a benefit if the tax liability goes below zero. And therefore, they're basically acting like payments in that way because it's a dollar for dollar benefit still and it doesn't get stuck at zero but keeps uh, increasing the benefits resulting in a possible situation where the tax code isn't acting as a tax but as a welfare benefit or social safety net program where we're going to get a quote refund end quote but it's not really a refund it's part of a welfare benefit or social safety net program in that instance therefore whenever we think of the credits we have to think about are we talking about non-refundable credits, which would be above this line, which would result in credits that will typically not bring the total tax below zero? Or are we talking about credits that are refundable credits, which could possibly bring the total tax below zero, providing a refund or benefit even when no taxes were in essence paid? Okay, this is the second page of the Form 1040 where we have in the tax and credits area focused on line 19, child tax credit or credit for other dependents uh, from Schedule 8812. In the payments area, we have the additional child uh, tax credit from Schedule 8812. You can see here that with this one credit that we are looking at, we have a line item or part of it up here in line 19, which means a non-refundable portion typically, and we have one down here, line 28, in the payments section, which means it could have a refundable portion to it, which adds a significant complication to the calculation of the credit because of this breakout between the non-refundable and refundable portions. All right, so let's first get into what's new. So the ACTC amount increase, that is going to be the additional child tax credit. We're also going to have to get used to these acronyms. We'll talk about those definitions uh, shortly. Uh, so it increased the maximum amount of ACTC for each qualifying child increased to $1,600. Reminders, a delayed refund for returns claiming ACTC. So in other words, uh, the IRS is going to try to get the refunds out, you know, obviously as quickly as possible. But when we're looking at these large credits, especially the refundable types of credits, that leaves open a door for people to try to take advantage of the tax code. And therefore, the IRS is typically going to possibly need more time to process those returns to try to reduce the abuse of fraudsters basically taking advantage of these credits. So the IRS can't issue refunds before mid-February 2024 for returns that, that uh, properly claim ACTC. This time frame applies to the entire refund, not just the portion associated with ACTC. So in other words, if you have this type of credit that we're going to be claiming, the IRS wants more time to process uh, the return. That's going to be the full return. They, they're not just going to hold on to the part of the return that's related to that particular credit because that would be somewhat tedious and difficult to do. So abbreviations. So this is what we need to know with the abbreviations. The following abbreviations will be used in these instructions when appropriate. So we have already seen the ACTC, which means the additional child tax credit. Then we have the ATIN, means Adoption Taxpayer Identification Number. So this is a forms of identification. The CTC means the child tax credit. So when we think about the child tax credit, usually people talk about the child tax credit and you might say we talk about the child tax credit that has a refundable and non-refundable portion to it but when we get into the more technical language breaking out say refundable and non-refundable portions we might use child tax credit and the additional child tax credit or those abbreviations the ctc for child tax credit and actc for the additional child tax credit then we have the i-10 which means individual taxpayer identification number, which might be used in cases where you don't have a social security number. So you have an I-10. We have the ODC, means credit for other dependents. So if we have a, a dependent 
then th- you might get a credit for the dependent, a child tax credit or an ODC, a credit for other dependents if they don't qualify for the child tax credit. The SSN, which of course means the social security number, the primary number that would be used for people to indicate who they are. You are a number to the government. The social security number is typically that number, although that number needs to coincide with your legal name on the tax return. If you don't have the social security number, we might then have an I-10 for identification. And in some cases, we might have an A-10 for the adoption taxpayer identification number. Then we have the TIN means taxpayer identification number. A TIN may be an A-10, an I-10, or social security number. In other words, if we say TIN, then we're trying to say we need your identification number, whether that be an, an, an A-10, a social security number, or an I-10. If we're getting more specific, we're saying we want your social security number or we want your A-10 or you want your I-10. So this is a broader term. All right. So you must have an, a, a TIN by the due date of your return. So if the, if the IRS can't recognize who you are, that's a problem, obviously. So if you or your spouse if filing jointly do not have an SSN, social security number, or I-10, so issued on or before the due date of your 2023 return, including extensions, you can't claim the CTC child tax credit, the ODC other dependent credit, or ACTC, the additional child tax credit on either your original or an amended 2023 return. If you apply for an I-10, so that's the number you would have if you don't have a social security number possibly, on or before the due date of your 2023 return, including extensions, and the IRS issues you an I-10 as a result of the application, the IRS will consider your I-10 as issued on or before the due date of your return. Each qualifying child uh, you use for the CTC, child tax credit, or ACTC, additional child uh, tax credit, must have a required social security number, SSN. So obviously, again, the children need to be identified by the government so they can properly allocate that to the tax benefits and so on and so forth and make sure that people are not double up, doubling up on the benefits of a child for multiple tax returns, committing some kind of fraud or something like that. So if you have a qualifying child who does not have the required SSN social security number, you can't use the child to claim the CTC, the child tax credit, or ACTC, the additional child tax credit, on either your original or an amended 2023 return. The required SSN social security number is one that is valid for employment and is issued before the due date of your 2023 return, including extensions. So if your qualifying child was born and died in 2023 and you do not have an SSN because they were born and then they they died and they don't have the SSN, somewhat hopefully of a tragic and not common situation for the child attach a copy of the child's birth certificate, death certificate, or hospital record so you can identify them. So the document must show the child was born alive. So if your qualifying child does not have the required SSN social security number, but has another type of taxpayer identification number issued on or before the due date of your 2023 return, including extensions, you may be able to claim the ODC for that child. In other words, if you have a, a qualifying child, then typically the, the benefits of, the, of a dependent, if you have a, like a dependent, the benefits of having a dependent, as we've discussed in prior sections or courses, are that one, you might get a credit related to them. If you get a credit related to them, then the biggest credit would be if they qualify for a child, would be the child tax credit, the CTC, and possibly the ACTC. If they don't qualify for the child tax credit, which is our point of focus here, you might have the other dependent credit, which is uh, sub substantially less. So C credit for other dependents, 
ODC. We'll talk about that later. So each dependent you use for the ODC must have a TIN by the due date of your return. If you have a dependent who does not have a social security number, SSN, I-10, or A-10, issued on or before the due date of your 2023 return, including extensions, you can't use the dependent to claim the ODC, other dependent credit, on either your original or amended 2023 return. If you apply for an I-10 or an A-10 for the dependent on or before the due date of your 2023 return, including extensions, and the IRS issues the I-10 or A-10 as a result of the application, the IRS will consider the I-10 or A-10 as issued on or before the due date of your return. So improper claims. So if you erroneously claim the CTC, Child Tax Credit, ACTC, Additional Child Tax Credit, or ODC, Other Dependent Credit, and it is later determined that your error was due to reckless or uh, intentional disregard of the CTC, ACTC, or ODC rules, you will not be allowed to claim any of these credits for two years, even if you are otherwise eligible to do so. So in other words, these credits, of course, are fairly large credits, and especially this ACTC that has a refundable component to it uh, is subject or something that's wide open for abuse, oftentimes with people that might commit fraud. When you're thinking about someone that's committing fraud, there's a level of intention involved. So the question is, was it a mistake that the tax return was filled out and, you, and people were claiming these when they should not have been able to, or was it intentional intention is a difficult thing uh, to prove so that's why you get words like if they were wreck do completely reckless disregard right so we're not going to call you straight out a liar but <laughs> it looks like you pretty clearly disregarded it what is the iris going to do well they're going to they're going to say obviously they might deny the credit afterwards or whatever and then uh two and then have two years even if you otherwise were eligible where you can't basically take the credit. So what's trying to happen is this credit is being used in part as a social safety net, especially the part related to the ACTC, the refundable portion of it. And they're trying to have that safety net available, but limit the abuse, which clearly often happens. Uh, and it's kind of sad because obviously the children are the key factors to the distribution of some of these credits and they could lead to abuse of, of you know, the children because people want to claim them on the tax returns in order to get basically credits which you know could be messy so uh if it is determined that your error was due to fraud you will not be allowed to claim any of these credits for 10 years so that comes into this when we get into the law of intention was it intentional was it reckless disregard or was it basically a mistake and then consequences uh accordingly so you may also have to pay penalties all right Form 8862 may be required. So if your CTC, child tax credit, refundable or non-refundable, depending on the tax year, the ACTC, the additional child tax credit, or the ODC for a year after 2015 was denied or reduced for any reason other than a math or clerical error, you must attach Form 8862 to your return to your tax return to claim the CTC, ACTC, or ODC unless exceptions apply. See Form 8862 information to claim certain credits after disallowance and its instructions for more information including whether an exception applies effect of credit on welfare benefits now another kind of unfortunate thing about a safety net kind of situation there's various kind of welfare benefits and usually the only really fair way to be allocating like a welfare or social security benefit is by income testing so we want to say, you know, every, everyone's equal under the law. We're going to look at the level of income to see whether or not someone qualifies for uh, assistance to try to help people out that need the assistance. Now, unfortunately, if you get assistance from some programs, it might count as revenue against other programs so that it complicates multiple programs together to see if you would qualify because of this kind of interplay. Uh, obviously, the welfare, the downside of the welfare programs is that you end up in a situation where people actually don't want income because if they get the income, they might lose the welfare benefits, 
and they might end up with income that is less than they would have gotten on the welfare benefits or not, you know, so, so this, so there's a disincentive with regards to the welfare benefits. So the question from a policy standpoint is, how can we provide a social safety net that helps people that needs the help without it disincentivizing them? Uh, and, and also so that it can be transparent, so they don't have to like lie about the benefits they're receiving to get other benefits and become this whole messy thing. So, so any refunds you receive as a result of taking the ACTC additional child tax credit can't be counted as income when determining if you or anyone else is eligible for benefits or assistance or how much you or anyone else can receive under any federal program or under any state or local program financed in whole or in part with federal funds. So these programs include temporary assistance for needing families, that's the TANF, Medicaid Supplemental Security Income, that's the SSI, and Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program, uh, formerly food stamps. So in addition, when determining eligibility, the refund can't be counted as a resource for at least 12 months after you receive it. Uh, check with your local benefits coordinator to find out if your refund will affect your benefits. All right, credits for qualifying children. The CTC child tax credit and ACTC additional child tax credit are credits for individuals who claim a child as a dependent if the child meets certain conditions. So the, the child, of course, is going to be typically a dependent. And then the question is whether or not they are a dependent that would qualify for a CTC typically. So to claim a child for a CTC child tax credit or ACTC additional child tax credit, the child must meet your meet must be your dependent under age 17. So now we have these age limits on there. Now remember that uh, if you review the instructions for who qualifies as a dependent, which are kind of linked to this idea of the child tax credit, then we have different kind of age restrictions as to whether they qualify for a dependent or not. So we might review basically the qualifications for a dependent where you're basically thinking of a hierarchy in terms of benefits as to when someone qualifies. In other words, if someone qualifies as a dependent, first you're thinking, do they qualify as a qualifying child as a dependent? If they are a qualifying child as a dependent, do they qualify for the child tax credit? If they don't qualify for the child tax credit, do they qual are are they a qualifying dependent for the other dependent credit, uh, or they or they are not a qualifying child? Kind of that's like kind of like the hierarchy of the flowchart when we think about basically a dependent and these age limitations. You have a couple different age limitations that come into play as to whether someone qualifies as a dependent versus as to whether someone qualifies to be able to take the child tax credit. Okay. So to claim a child for the CTC or ATC, the child must be your dependent under age 17 at the end of 2023 and meet all the conditions in step one through three under who qualifies as your dependent in the instructions for form 1040. Example, so your child turns 17 on December 30th, 2023 and is a citizen of the United States and claimed as your dependent on your return. So you can't use the child as, uh, to claim the CTC or ACTC, the child tax credit or additional child tax credit, because the child was not under age 17 at the end of 2023. So here's an age cutoff scenario. Now remember that tax software will typically help with this. So when you're doing the data input into tax software, you have to make sure that you have the child's date of birth properly input. And if that's the case, the software will help you with these cutoffs. However, you want to make sure that that you have an idea of what the cutoffs are so that you can explain what is happening to the client and so that you can, of course, do tax planning into the future as the children uh, get older, for example. So for each qualifying child whom you are claiming as a CTC child tax credit or ACTC additional child tax credit, you must check the quote child tax credit in quote box in column four of the dependent section on page one of form 1040, 1040SR or 1040NR for the child. Adopted child. An adopted child is, uh, is always treated as your own child. An adopted child includes the child lawfully placed with you for legal adoption. 
So obviously, if they are fully adopted, then they are your legal child. And so, so you have this benefits would apply tip. So if your child is age 17 or older at the end of 2023, see credit for other dependent. So remember the idea for dependents in terms of a flow chart is, are they a qualifying child? If they're a child and they qualify for the dependent, do they qualify for the child tax credit? If they're older than 17, then they might, they're not going to qualify for the child tax credit, but they may still qualify for as a dependent and therefore for the other credit, that being the other dependent credit, which is substantially less. So credit for other dependents, that's the ODC. The ODC is for individuals with a dependent who meets the following conditions. The person is claimed as a dependent on your return. Uh, to determine if an individual is your dependent, begin with step one under who qualifies for your dependent in the instructions for form 1040. So you might want to review those. We might add a presentation just on the qualifying for a dependent, looking at that flow chart so you can get an idea of that keeping in mind. When someone qualifies as a dependent, you're trying to figure out the hierarchy of benefits from that, which you would typically be the child tax credit first, if not that, the other dependent credit. And there could also be a benefit for people that are single moving one dependent could move someone from a filing status of single, which is the worst filing status for taxes, to head of household, okay? So the persons can't be used by you to claim the CTC or ACTC. Uh, so see credits for qualifying children earlier. So the person was a US citizen, US national or US resident alien. For more information, you can see publication 519 in those situations. So if the person is your adopted child, see adopted child later, example. So your siblings, a 10 year old child lives in Mexico and qualifies as your dependent. The child is not a US citizen, US national or US resident alien. You can't use the child to claim the ODC. Uh, for each dependent for whom you are claiming the ODC, you must check the quote, credit for other dependents in quote box in column four of the dependent section on page one of form 1040, 1040, SR 1040, NR. So that box, by the way, if you're using tax software, we'll take a look at a tax software example. If they qualify, you'll see on page one of the form 1040, you'll see the dependents listed out. And then typically one of those two boxes will be checked because those are the benefits you get from a dependent. If they were a qualifying child, you would see typically the child tax credit. And if they're not a qualifying child, hopefully you can get the ODC uh, credit. And in some cases, possibly if none of those are checked off, then you're not going to get the, the credit for it. But in certain situations, you might still be thinking about whether you get a benefit with regards to the the movement from single status to possibly head of household status. And just note uh, that obviously when you're dealing with people that that have uh, non US citizenship, that's going to add complications to tax preparation, which is an area that you might specialize in uh, and, and get to know that area. If you don't know that area, well, then you'd have to do research to pick up those returns or possibly say, hey, look, that's outside of the scope of, of where my point of focus is for the tax preparation. So you always have to kind of go back to that. Keep that in mind. You have to have a business model that actually works or you're not going to make money and you're not going to be able to help anyone because you're not making money and you're going to go out of business. So caution. So you can't use the same child to claim the credits under credits for qualifying child uh, children and the ODC. So in other words, you can't, of course, use the same social security number to double dip on the credits. You can't claim the child tax credit and the other dependent credit. You only get one or the other, which is why when we think of the flow chart for whether someone qualifies as a dependent, we're typically thinking, do they qualify first for the child tax credit? If not, then do they qualify typically if they're still a dependent for the ODC? If they don't qualify for either, are they still a dependent that possibly could give us some benefit such as changing filing status from uh, from from uh, head of, single to head of household. But typically, if they're a dependent and they're a U.S. citizen, you're going to have one of the other credits applied as well, which is going to be the child tax credit or the ODC, but not both. 
Also, obviously, you can't claim the same child on multiple different tax returns, which becomes another area of contention with basically separation situations or, or you know, one child has two parents that aren't married or something like that. And the question comes up, well, who's going to claim the child? And again, the poor child is, is a substantial kind of asset in those situations and could come be the subject of like a kind of a tug of war between that. All right, let's go to the adopted child. So an adopted child is always treated as your own child. An adopted child includes a child lawfully placed with you for legal adoption. If you are a U.S. citizen or U.S. national and your adopted child lived with you all year as a member of your household in 2023, that child meets the condition three earlier to be a qualified person for the ODC. So limits on the CTC and ODC, the maximum credit amount of your CTC, child tax credit and ODC, other dependent credit, may be reduced if either one or two applies. So the amount on line 18 of your form 1040 or 1040 SR, 1040 NR is less, uh, less than both credits. So now if, if that is the situation, then the credit is gonna take your tax liability below zero which normally a credit can't do because taxes by definition mean that you're paying money to the government for government services and so on, right? It doesn't mean that the government is paying you. If the government is paying you, then it's not a tax. It's a benefit. It's some kind of benefit or welfare type of program. And, and so, so that's the situation where there could be a, obviously a limitation. But again, some of the credit might be refundable, in which case you still could get some benefit in that scenario. So if the amount is zero, you cannot take, uh, take either credit because there is no tax to reduce. But you may be able to take the ACTC. So that's why when we think of the child tax credit, you, you're going to hear people talk about it usually as, well, you have a child tax credit. Here's the benefit for the child tax credit. And there's a refundable portion to it, meaning you might still get, you know, a benefit of a refund, even if your tax liability goes below zero, which means it's not a tax or a refund. It's more of a welfare or benefit program. But when we talk more technically about it, we can start to think, well, we're going to try to break out the portion that's the child tax credit versus the additional child tax credit the additional child tax credit generally being the amount that might be subject to the refundable, you know, component. Okay. So, but you may be able to take the ACTC if you are claiming the CTC. So the additional child tax credit uh, or the child tax credit, you cannot take the ACTC additional child tax credit if you are only claiming the ODC. So in other words, if you have a qualifying child, then you would think you'd get the child tax credit if you had income to claim the child tax credit, but if the income goes below the threshold of taxes and you don't owe any taxes, you're not going to get the CTC, the one not refundable portion, but you might still get some of the ACTC. However, if the dependent doesn't qualify as a qualifying child, then it's all moot because you're not going to get any of that because you the only thing you can get is the ODC, the other dependent credit in that case. All right, C part uh, 2A additional child tax credit for all filers later. So your modified adjusted gross income, your AGI, is more than the than the amount shown below for your filing status. So married filing jointly, 400000 Now this is on the top end side. So now you clearly have sufficient income. You're going to, you have the tax liability to cover the credit, but as income goes up, these benefit programs will typically phase out. And so we have the high end side of income phasing out, married filing jointly, 400,000. So all other filers, so that's gonna be, you know, when we think about income tax filers, we usually group them into single file statuses and married file statuses. If you're single, you're either gonna be filing single or head of household. If you have a qualifying child, then you're typically going to be a head of household in that situation. If you're married, it's either married filing joint, which is the normal situation, or married uh, filing separate, which would be the elective situation. So modified AGI. 
So for, for purposes of the CTC child tax credit and ODC additional uh, uh, dependent credit, the, uh, your, your modified adjusted gross income, AGI, is the amount on line three of schedule 8812. Uh, so on these income phase outs, it's not usually the top line of income, but we have those kind of above the line or schedule one deductions. Uh, and, and so we take the adjusted gross income when we think about these income phase outs. But generally, the idea is as your income goes up, you could be subject to these phase outs for benefits such as credits.